changed a lot of lives. We've, we've, we've created people who are now athletes, uh, who are running, riding 100 miles a day. I'm 53. I have never ridden a bicycle before. I'm concerned about the fundraising aspect. $2,000 is a lot of money. A lot of people have been afraid of raising that amount of money. I've never been good at trying to, like, you know, raise money for anything. The people who um, gave me the most money were the people I hardly knew. We have an incredible variety of ages and uh, people from all over the country, people from Boston, Chicago, Miami. I'm an attorney and I'm doing this ride with one of my sons, Josh. You know, I think of the ride um, kind of as a race. It's not a race, but I think of it kind of as a race. I think of it as a race against, against HIV. Just to tell you a little bit about the Jeffrey Goodman Special Care Clinic, we provide testing and services to HIV positive people from the time that they are tested until um, their T cells reach about 200. Never in the history of AIDS has there been a fundraiser or any effort that has required people to make the kind of commitment that each of you has made to get to this point. That is the kind of passion, the kind of passion that each one of you has shown that distinguishes you as people who are dedicated to making a difference. That is the kind of passion that is making this ride the biggest AIDS bike-a-thon in this nation's history. Since Josh tested positive, anything he wants or anything he wants to do, <laughs> I think, you know, he has to have it because, you know, if sometime in the future he's not here, you know, I don't want to feel bad because I deprived him of a new Rolls Royce, <laughs> of a new home in the hills. <laughs> so, um, you yeah, know, sometimes we'll just talk about things and I'll think, you know, well, maybe I should get that for him or maybe sometime in the future, if I can, I should think of that. And I have to think, you know, no, we have to live a, a normal life and, and I have to be reasonable here. In a way, it's probably good I, I don't have unlimited funds <laughs> because I, you know, I would, I would certainly need psychiatric help because I wouldn't be spending it correctly. But, but it's very tough, you know, I, I will not, I will not let go of Josh. I will not let him get sick. You know, I know that's not realistic that I don't have that power. But it's very scary, you know? And as I said previously, my sister lost a son in his mid-20s. You know, our family's been through it. I know it's for real. And, um, you know, like Josh, I'll, I'll hear, you know, so-and-so who, who tested positive 15 years ago just died. And people say, oh, isn't that great? He lasted 15 years, you know? Josh has to last, our, our family lives into their 80s and, and Josh has to do that too. You know, I, you know, I can't accept anything less than that. Being a mom is, is probably primary to me. And one of the things that has really struck home to me about this ride is that um, like giving birth it's it's going to be a life-changing experience um i'm riding this ride in honor of a very dear friend from mississippi um whom i've known since first grade his name is ken and um he was um diagnosed with pneumocystis pneumonia um two years ago and um 
Ken is near death now, which is really ironic as I approach this ride. Um, because I don't know if he'll make it. So I'm doing this for him. And I'm doing it for all the um, men and women that come into that agency that we see that are privileged to have a place to go. be cared for. As Ken is sick in Mississippi two weeks ago when he needed to be hospitalized, he had to go to five different hospitals to get someone to take him because of homophobia. So I do this right for him. Once we got everything all taken care of, once we took care of everything he needed, um, he really let go real, real easy, real easy. And uh, you know, there are so many times when I'm, I hear his voice, or I just want to pick up the phone and go, "Hey, you know, what are we having for dinner tonight?" You know, um, and. Um, I don't think I'll ever stop missing just, you know, be, um, being hugged by you. So it's just a joy every time I clip into that bike. And I just know that it's somehow going to open a door that day. I'm going to meet someone new. I'm going to see something new in a different way. I can ride a bicycle. I can train for six months. I can raise a lot of money. Now I can dedicate my life for a period of time to, to doing something really significant about AIDS. You know, you're, you're in Big Sur, and the sun is burning this great clean white hole through the fog. and just something opens up, you know, your mind just kind of goes and uh, all of a sudden you know that this is kind of what life is about. And it was like on the third day we forgot why we were even doing the ride. We kind of simply existed. It's one thing to be able to last over a 60 or 80 mile period and come home and die <laughs> and the next day sit around all day, but it's another again to get up that next day and do the same thing. I was like, no, 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 no way are we going up that hill. <laughs> I, was tell, I was trying to warn as many people as I could. You know, you tell the rest of the world I'm walking, huh? <laughs> you show me walking, you're going to die, all of you. In a very loud voice, mechanical failure. Mechanical failure. There's something about being on a bicycle that people are more friendly to you. We got together yesterday and, and uh, made the banner and then made the, we put them up all along the fence and we thought it would be like a, like a pep rally even though we couldn't be there. It, we've come from Chicago and um, we are having the time of our lives. We've been in uh, uh, other organized rides before and I was telling the executive uh, director of the center that uh, all the people here are going to be spoiled. Any other organized ride that they ever do, they will always talk about, well, it's not as good as the California AIDS ride. Ah, it's the toughest ride I've been on, but I've never felt more alive than I do right now. Everything that's been done here has been done fantastically, especially for the first time. I mean, the, the little things like checking your bikes and the ride is beautiful. Not to be believed beautiful. So they really picked a good route. 
these people from Cape Ray. There you are, right? Right? Well, well, Raise your well, hands. Well, well, well. This is for you. This is for you. Bottom of your heart. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Our hats are off. You're a pal and a confidant. I only don't want to say. I only just want to say. I hope it always will be this way. I want to thank you, thank you. Oops, segue. Oops, segue. Now, before our writers come home, we would like to ask you to observe a few moments of silence as we honor the memories of all those who could not ride today. Please turn your eyes to Santa Monica Boulevard and witness the bicycle being led down the center path. This seat is unoccupied. The pedals are empty and there are no hands on the handlebars. Who do you see on this seat? smiling face do you remember? As this riderless cycle passes among us, let us remember our friends and our loved ones. Let us resolve that they shall not have died in faith. We have to look for the things that we're afraid of. We have to look at the things that we don't want to do, the things that scare us, the things that are tough, the things that are challenging. Each of us has lost friends and loved ones to AIDS. They have died, not us. We are alive. Our mission is not complete. We will do the AIDS ride next year. We'll have more riders. We'll raise more money. We'll do it in 96 if we have to. We'll do it in 97 and 98 and 99, and we will pedal and we will climb the hills and face the wind as long as our friends and loved ones are dying of AIDS. Life. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart when I say I, really, I love you all, I really do.